Chapter 17 Current Electricity This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Electric Circuit Electric circuit is a complete or closed path through which electric charges can flow from one terminal of an electrical source to another passing through one or more electrical components. Usually, there are four main components in an electrical circuit. The first component is electrical energy source or active components. For example, battery, EC or AC source. The second component is load or passive components, which are components where electrical energy is converted into other useful energy. Examples are lamp, which produce solar energy, heater, which produce thermal energy, speaker, which produce sound energy, and motor, which produce kinetic energy. The third component is conductors, which connect components together. Examples are copper wires. The fourth component is switches, which are used to close or open a circuit. This is a simple electric circuit, which has battery, a switch, and a load. They are connected with conductor, which is usually copper wire. Here are some common circuit symbols. This is a cell. When two or more cells are connected in series together, they become battery. This is a DC supply. And this is an AC supply. This is a lamp. This is a fixed resistor. This is a real state. This is a potentiometer. This is a fuse. This is a transformer. This is a light dependent resistor or LDR. This is a thermistor. This is an emitter. And this is a voltmeter. These two are galvanometer. This is a diode. When the diode can produce light, it becomes light emitting diode or LED. This is the earth or ground. This is a switch. This is a button switch. And lastly, this is a two-way switch. So, you need to remember all these symbols so that you can read and analyze electric circuit later. Now let's talk about electric current. An electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. The formula for electric current is I equals Q over T, where I is the electric current, Q is the electric charge, and T is time. The SI unit for electric current is ampere, symbol capital A. Ammeter is used to measure current. It should be connected in series with other components. If it is connected in parallel, it will cause a short circuit. So, this diagram shows how an emitter is connected. Conventional current. Electric current is the flow of negative charges that is electrons from negative terminal to positive terminal of the energy source. However, conventional current defines the flow of electric current in opposite direction. That is, positive charges or protons flow from positive terminal to negative terminal of the energy source. 
this simple circuit explain how it works. So we have positive terminal and negative terminal of the battery. This is the direction of flow of conversion current flowing from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. This is the flow of direction of the electron flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the energy source. We usually use a conventional current to study and analyze an electric circuit. Now, let's discuss about the difference between electromotive force and potential difference. Electromotive force or EMF symbol epsilon is work done W by the source to move one unit of charge Q around a complete circuit. The formula for EMF is epsilon equals W over Q. Potential difference or PD symbol V is work done W to move one unit of charge Q through two points. The formula is V equals to W over Q. This is a simple circuit. So this is the positive terminal and negative terminal for the battery. And this is the direction of flow of conventional current. EMF is measured at the battery. One potential difference is measured at these two points at the load. The SI unit for both EMF and PD is Joule per column or volt. Volt meter is used to measure EMF or PD between two terminals. It should be connected parallel in a circuit. It is an open circuit if it is connected in series. So this diagram shows how to connect voltmeter when you want to measure the EMF of the battery. And this diagram shows how to connect voltmeter when we want to measure power potential difference on this load. Electromotive force is related to energy sources. For example, battery lead or DC supply. Potential difference is related to loads. Examples are light bulbs and resistors. Energy sources provide energy to the circuit. Loads consume energy from the circuit. Energy sources convert other forms of energy. Example, chemical energy to electrical energy. Loads convert electrical energy to other form of energy, examples, light and heat. Resistance. Resistance, symbol R, is a measure of the extent of a component resists the flow of electrical charge. Resistance R can be defined as the ratio of the potential difference V of a component to the electric current I flowing through it. So this is the potential difference and this is the current. So R equals to V over I. SI unit for resistance is Ohm. Resistors are components with known resistance value. They are used to control the amount of current flowing through the circuit. There are two types of resistors. First is fixed resistors. Fixed resistors are resistors that have constant resistance. Second is variable resistors or real states. They are resistors that we can change the resistance value within a range. So this is this picture shows fixed resistor and this picture shows variable resistor. 
and this is the real state. Now, let's look at the ex experiment to determine unknown resistance. So this is the circuit diagram of the experiment. We want to measure the resistance of this unknown resistor. First, real state is set to maximum value to allow small amount of current flowing, hence protecting the circuit from excess current. Then, switch is closed to allow current flowing through the circuit. The emitter reading I and the corresponding voltmeter reading V is recorded. The real state is adjusted to allow more current flowing through the circuit. Another set of emitter reading I and corresponding voltmeter reading V is recorded. So, step 4 is repeated a few times to obtain a few sets of emitter reading I and corresponding voltmeter reading V. Then, we plot a graph of V against I. So, this is the graph that we should get. A straight line graph should be obtained. The unknown resistance R can be obtained by calculating the gradient of the graph. So M is equal to R. Resistivity. The resistance of a uniform wire is directly proportional to its length, L, and inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area, A. So, this is the physical outlook of a resistor. So, when the current is flowing into the resistor, I, this is the cross-sectional area, A, and this is the length of the resistance, L. The formula for the resistor is R equals rho L over A. Where rho is the resistivity of the material. Resistivity, rho, is an intrinsic property of a material. It is a measure of how much material resists the flow of electric current. The SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current I flowing through a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference V across it under constant physical conditions. Therefore, V equals to IR. This is the formula of Ohm's law. When you plot the graph of voltage to current, we should get a linear line and the gradient is the resistance. Conductors that obey Ohm's law are known as ohmic conductors. Constant physical conditions are temperature, cross-sectional area, and length. Non-ohmic conductors Conductors that do not obey Ohm's law are known as non-ohmic conductors. In non-ohmic conductors, the resistance varies and their VI curves are non-linear. Examples of non-ohmic conductors are filament lamps, thermistors, and semiconductors. Resistance is dependent on temperature. The resistance of metals increases as the temperature increases. The resistance of most non-ohmic conductors decreases as the temperature increases. Now, look at the resistance of a filament lamp. Filament lamp is usually made up of metal tungsten. The VI curve of filament lamp is shown below. When voltage increases, more current flows through it. This produces heat and light. When temperature increases, the resistance increases. The gradient on the graph indicates the resistance of filament lamp. 
Now, let's discuss the resistance of a semiconductor diode. Semiconductor is a material that will become a conductor when certain condition is met. Some common examples are silicon and germanium. Diode allows current to flow in one direction only. The IV curve of a typical diode is shown below. From this graph, we can determine the VF, which is forward bias voltage. For silicon, VF is 0.7 volt. For germanium, VF is 0.3 volt. So this is the forward bias region, which is after VF. When the voltage applied on the diode is more than VF, the diode has very low resistance and becomes a conductor. Large amount of current flows through it. When the voltage applied on the diode is reverse, the diode has very high resistance and very small amount of current flows in opposite direction. This current is often negligible. So from the graph, this is the reverse bias region. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy, you can track your learning more effectively, download my notes in printable PDF form, take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter, get your first-hand updated contents from me, get quicker response from me, and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one-time payment, no recurring fees, no hidden costs. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees and revision crash courses. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.